Hey guys, Doc. So today I'm going to do soil testing video. Before I begin, in the description below I'm going to link to one page and on that page I'll put not only the Amazon link for this testing kit but then I'll also try and find a direct link because half the time when I put up an Amazon link it actually sells out. So I'll see if I can find a direct link. Also, when we start talking about soil testing, we cover a lot of this in the lawn guides. So make sure you have the lawn guides. They have calendars. We talk about this. There's a cool season. There's a Bermuda and a Zoysia, and each one has its own website. You don't have to download anything. There's no app. There's no sign up. There's no email, anything. Just use them. They're up all the time. Today, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you up the farm property because I got to test one of those fields. I'll show you how I take a test up there because it's the same as the lawn, basically. And then I'll actually show you how I process that dirt and then this soil test. Now I went online and I ordered several different soil tests because I think the main reason people don't get soil tests is inconvenience. And I wanted to find one that was super easy, that was fast, accurate, easy to read, and I found a winner for sure. So this is probably what I'm gonna use from now on. Now, I, a lot of you guys know that I've been using Clemson, but uh, even that can be kind of a pain in the butt and they've really gotten slow. I mean, two or three weeks it took me to get a soil sample back from them. So uh, green's not looking too shabby and the lawn's looking pretty good. Let's go out to the farm and <laughs> I actually went out real early. I got there at sunrise, I was doing a little dove hunting out there and at the same time uh, doing some soil sampling. So here we go. Can you hear it? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. This is this is what life's about right here. Peace, quiet. <clears throat> so this morning I'm doing I'm doing a video. I'm actually out here doing a video on soil testing. And I'm probably going to be applying some granular nitrogen to these fields. But I figured I'd go ahead and uh, come out a little bit early and do a little dove hunting. You know, for, what, 15 years as an entrepreneur, I've been working seven days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. And this is one of those things that you sort of have to sacrifice. And I sacrificed. I haven't been dove hunting in over 15 years. And I used to never miss opening day dove season. Loved it. Loved dove hunting. So much fun. But uh, finally, life has slowed down a little bit so I can kind of enjoy it. So I'm going to come up here and um, I'm going to grab some soil samples out of these fields. I've already done the upper field and I'm going to show you those results. But I also want to show you how I take samples because sampling up here, well, at any agricultural field is the same as sampling at your house. What you want to do is you want to divide, you want to divide your property into certain territories. So if you have distinctive territories. So for us, my upper field looks totally different than my lower fields. That soil is a dark brown these fields are a light brown, almost a reddish hue to them because of the clay. So I would not combine those two samples. The same thing at home. I would not combine my front yard and my backyard. That's something I wouldn't do because I know that they're completely different. Not totally different, but there's enough of an area that's different. I need to take different samples. Hey guys, so I'm out here in the fields today and basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a consensus. So I'm trying to take a consensus of this whole area. But I would not try and take a consensus of this area plus that area back there. I am going to, this area looks the same and is about the same. So let's say that this is my front yard and we might consider that my backyard and that's my side yard. So I would actually want to do probably three tests out here. And I'm going to do the testing here the same way that you would do your testing at home. And how is that? Oh, there goes a duck. <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down two or three inches. I'm not going to go deep. Now you want to get below um, below that all the grass and thatch layer when you're testing at home. For me here, I'm pretty much have raw soil, so I'm just going to go in maybe about two inches. I'm mainly concerned right now about my root zone, what that plant is going to be taking up over the first probably four to six weeks. So I'm just going to go through and get a sample and just go back and forth and do sort of a Z pattern in here and just take samples all the way along here at about two or three inches. Now, for this test, you don't really don't need that much material, which is nice. Uh, I'm collecting more because I'm doing a consensus. So I'm coming through here, I'm opening it up, and I'm just gonna keep going around, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this field, and then we're gonna go down, we're gonna test that field down here. So now I'm in my backyard, and I would do the same thing. I would go over here, I would go over here, back and forth and back and forth. So this is my backyard. I'm going to take a consensus of this Once whole I area. Once I have my sample, I'm going to take this sample and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home. I'm going to put it on a, I like to put mine on like a paper plate, put it out in the sunshine. I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to find something to sort of screen out the, the actual vegetation out of here. That's what I want. I want to get that vegetation out of here. And then I'll just take my little scoop. I'll put it in my container and send it off and I'm pretty much done. So before I head back home and show you the test results, I want to go over something that's really important. A lot of people freak out about a soil test and then they look at the recommendations. The one thing I don't like about these companies is I do not like the recommendations they make for fertilizer. I got back a fertilizer test, I got back a soil test, and it gave me if you're going to use organic, use this, and if you're going to use synthetic, use this. And I did not like the numbers that they presented to me. It just didn't make sense. So all I want you to focus on are two main things. Number one, your pH look at your pH and understand how that impacts. Again, in the free lawn guides, I have that chart up that shows you how the pH impacts your soil and plant nutrient uptake. The next thing you're gonna look for, just look for weird spikes. Just because you're a little bit high or a little bit low is not all that important. You know, don't look at uh, the copper. I've got excess copper, big deal, it's not a big deal. What I want you to look for is I want you to, especially it comes, main thing is it's gonna be phosphorus, is watch that phosphorus level. That's really important. Is it really, is it way too high or is it really low? So you just wanna watch that phosphorus level and the pH, those are the two main things that I actually focus on. So here's my soil test. This is the one that I've chosen. Uh, I ordered several and a couple of them after I opened them and I read the instructions, I threw them away. I'm like, dude, I don't wanna go through all this. I didn't even bother with them. There was another one that was pretty good, that was pretty close to this, but this one I believe is probably one of the best. Now, so it comes in and basically it has a QR code. So you take your phone, you scan your QR code, and it'll ask you to create an account. Well, once you create an account, that's it. You don't have to do anything else. Then what you're gonna do is it'll ask you to enter, there's a registration number on here. You enter your registration number, you enter it again to verify it, and you're pretty much done. Now you can go ahead and just put your sample into the, into the jar I'll show you and send it off. And you'll get a notification. You'll get an email notification saying your sample was received in a few days. And then a few days later, you'll see your results and you pull up, you go on your app or on the computer, you pull up your results and there it is. And I'll put that up. I'll put my results up in a minute on this front field. But again, the instructions are very simple. So what does the kit come with? It comes with that instruction card. It comes with a self-addressed envelope. So there's postage paid in the envelopes already. That's one thing I like. The other thing I like is I love this little test right here. Now this actually has the number right on the jar. Um, there's other tests out there that you gotta take the sticker off and then you gotta put it on the jar and there's a bunch of different, this one's right on the jar. Simple people, keep it simple. And then it comes with a, it comes with a scoop, which you're gonna put exactly this amount of dirt into this. So when normal soil samples are done, you're gonna get a big sample, like a cup of soil, and you're gonna send it off. Like when I send mine off to Clemson, and what they do is they break that soil, they, they actually dry it, they grind it, and then they break it into several different 
little patches, little tablespoons of soil. And then each one of those goes into a different sort of testing solution and they break it down. So you have a, all the soil is actually broken down more and more and more and more. So that's sort of the old school testing. This is the new, this is, this testing method has a little pod. So if you see inside here, there's a little pod in that solution. I believe the solution is distilled water, but there's a little pod in here. What's the purpose of that pod? Well, when you put your soil in this, you leave the water in it and it'll actually turn into sort of this liquefied solution. That pod, it's an ion exchange resin is what happens. What does that mean? It means that that little pod is going to uptake nutrients the same way it replicates how a plant uptakes nutrients. So just because you have um, a certain nutrient, just because you have X in your soil, doesn't mean that the plant is going to uptake that in that form. It takes it up in a different form. So this little pod replicates the uptake of an actual plant, and that's why this test is so effective. So you just basically, you just open this up, you pour your soil in from the scoop, and then you close it up, you pop it into your little magic bag, pop it into the little magic bag, seal it, put it in your mailbox, put your flag up, and you're done. Isn't that cool? So I don't know why more and more people uh, testing places don't don't do this. Why they don't upgrade their their um, their technology? It doesn't take much. QR codes are basically free. You know, put a QR code on it. Uh, this has a barcode as well too, if you want it for the thing. But it, it's just so much simpler. It's so easy. Hey, so I uh, I just got home and Bill's over here cutting his grass. If you're wondering what that noise is, so I took the soil. I grabbed an old box. Uh, Amazon box. I broke it down and I put a brick on it. Why did I put a brick on it? I put a brick on it because if a wind comes by, your soil goes everywhere. And so I just put it in a spot that I know is going to get sun for the next, you know, four to six hours. And I just break it apart. I am just breaking it apart and just setting it on this box. Now I'm just going to let it dry out. A little redneck ingenuity here. So I've had my soil sample sitting on this box for about three hours in the sunshine and it's completely dry. Normally I can just crunch this up by hand but this is so hard I actually stole one of my landscape bricks and I'm actually sitting here kind of crushing it is I just like to find something to just sort of screen this material with and believe it or not, this was in my junk pile. This is a uh, pool skimmer tray and it works really well. So all I'm gonna do, put it in here. And the main thing I just wanna get out of here is I wanna get any rocks or any vegetation. You don't have to you don't have to screen it real fine. You don't need much. This is what I'm left with and I am going to take a little scoop of this and put it into the soil test. Again, it's a it's an ion exchange ionic exchange resin testing that they do. So I'm going to break this little seal. It's kind of hard to open these. <laughs> ah, there. They put some kind of sealant on it. So you just want to leave all the fluid. And there's the little packet inside of there that will actually absorb the nutrients just like a plant does. So it, it absorbs the nutrients that are ready to be taken up by the plant. And that's the important part. So I'm just gonna take my scoop. It's getting windy out here. And I'm gonna go down to where I'm more fine here. There's my scoop. So I've got one scoop of material. I'm gonna put that material inside this little jar.
I am going to seal the jar up and I've already gone online and registered it so I just put it in here stick it in my mailbox and I'm pretty much done man it's gotten bright out here it's gonna get back up into the 90s this week so anyways I put my kit inside the little envelope you don't have to add any postage postage is included in the price that you pay just go to your mailbox and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it in here put my flag up and I'm ready to go so someone was commenting about my banana plant back here that's probably <laughs> 22 feet tall every year we cut that down to the ground by the way so that is one year worth of growth <laughs> and it's a it's a hardy banana so it really doesn't produce bananas it produces these little teeny things that look like bananas but they're not really bananas anyways so I've done all my soil testing. I've gone out, it's pretty simple. Like I said, you just get the soil, dry it out, crush it up, take the scoop, put it into the container and send it off and it's fast. Um, five or six days is typically what I'm getting it depending on when you mail it. Now, when you go online, you go back online, you'll get an email saying, hey, your analysis is ready. You click on it, log back in and there it is. You click on it and it's very easy to read. So I'll actually put it, I'll put the lower field up on the screen and I've got a copy in my hand. Uh, there is a print icon on that where you can print it, but I don't like the way it prints out. So I actually did a screen grab and actually put it into a PDF so it would be easier. I don't like the way, that's one improvement they could do, is they could make their printout look just like um, what is on the computer screen. I wish they would do that. Anyways, here's the mistake that a lot of people are going to make. A lot of people are going to go try and go too in-depth in their analysis because all I really care about, if you look at down here, if you look at the charts, okay, I want you to look at these charts over here. The macronutrients and the first three are really what I'm all, the only thing I'm going to be concerned about. So my nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. My phosphorus and potassium are actually in uh, the optimal range and my nitrogen is very low. So what does that mean? That means that my fields probably need to have some nitrogen. Now I've already got leafy greens growing, so I don't want to spray liquid nitrogen out there um, and potentially burn them. So I'm going to get a granular nitrogen and put it out on a dry day so that it falls down to the ground and then we'll water it in or let the rain push it in. The only other thing I really care about is my pH. And it says my pH is a 5.98 and it says it's pretty much optimal. So I'm right at a six on that pH on the lower field. I start to worry about my pH when I break five, to be honest. So when I'm seeing something below a five, that's when I kind of freak out and I'm like, dude, I gotta get some lime down here. So again, focus on your three main nutrients, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, and focus on your pH and don't overreact. They, all these places and you're, that they'll come back with you need to apply um, three quarters of a pound of synthetic 4600 so they want three quarters of a pound per square foot per 100 square feet of a synthetic 4600 and i'm like this is where you start to get in trouble if you are low on nitrogen just put out a pgf complete that's all you gotta do put out pgf complete don't worry about it. Again, the only time I would probably kind of be concerned and maybe look at switching is if I had a really high phosphorus level. Not just a little bit high, but I mean really high. At that point, I would go to something like a PGF Complete Zero Phosphorus. So we, that is available as well too. Um, so really, I'm, I'm gonna urge caution on all the recommendations. People get this all the time and they end up screwing up their lawn don't necessarily look at this because they're saying this is what you how much you have to pound down in order to correct this deficiency and you can get into trouble so anyways guys like i said i'll link to it down below it's kind of a fun nice chill saturday afternoon and uh we got a lot more coming on i've got a blink brand new blink camera system i'm putting on there i've got um, push button security lock video i'm going to do for you and they're going to start the the renovation on the actual house starts next week so we got a lot going on. Hit subscribe and I'll put up a bunch more videos. Die.